This guy is a DED soldier first class, and everyone else seems to be a DED soldier third class. So I'm going to assume that once we kill this guy, then we can just go back and turn the mission in and whoa, that's a whole lot of new DED soldiers. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cinnaball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. So oh, Bill is now a member of the Malakin Zealots. He's a member of the Angel Cartel, but they still don't exactly trust him. Um, probably because of all of those uh, frigates and cruisers that we shot when we were living over in Molden Heath. So let's see if we can't do something about that. Right here in this station is an agent of the Archangels of the Angel Cartel. Let's see if he'll talk to us. Do you have any work for me? Empant Handrivau? The drone infestation. Here is a mission suited to someone of your caliber. An entire news building at Cinebel. One of our Dead Space asteroid belts in Jorund has been infested by rogue drones. We lost contact with the miners working there a few days ago after they'd reported sightings of mysterious craft nearby. Our reconnaissance team then confirmed our suspicions. The entire belt has been infested with those pests. Not only that, but they have already erected a drone silo there, which the drones often use as the first building block for an actual drone hive. We need to act fast before they manage to grow in numbers, building a Cinnabel. Your job is to see to it that their silo is completely destroyed. I'll send in chips later to clean up the mess. However, I warn you, the drones roaming the belt will no doubt all come to aid their silo once it's attacked, so it would be advisable to try and split them up and clear out the guards before you attempt to finish your objectives. Okay, destroy the drone silo. This is our first mission. The rules of our run have not allowed us to do any missions for anyone but the Angel Cartel, and this is the first time that we've been in a station where there was an Angel Cartel agent. So we're going to try this. Reward 108,000 ISK, 115,000 ISK, so 115,000 reward, 108,000 bonus reward if you do it in the next two hours, 120 loyalty points, which we can use to, which we can trade in for all kinds of goodies from the Angel Cartel. However, we have to go to Jorund, which is next door, and it was where I think those bubble campers were before. So this is going to be an adventure. The key scan of the Jorund gate. Nothing there. All right, straight through. I feel like this is the first time we're putting our slasher at serious risk. All of the jumping around in low sec. Um, low sec gate camps are easy for our high agility frigate to avoid. A bubble camp will be a whole other story. But so far, so good. Whoa! Three battleships, three frigates. And the angels still show us being hostile to us, even though we're angels ourselves. But let's warp to our encounter. And we'll use this opportunity to also set a safe spot that is not in direct line between two gates or a gate in the station. Archangel Assembly Plant, Serpentis Corporation, interesting. So I expect that once we warp through here, we will see the drone silo and also, also some hostile rogue drones. And we just kill them and then be on our way. Sounds simple enough. Nobody on D-scan. Okay. So let's start by... These guys are over by the abandoned drill. Let's start in that direction. Pretty sure these drone frigates will fall pretty quickly, especially now that we have them webbed. And there's some drone drones, so to speak, over here with these little X symbols. There's a turret that's not shooting us yet. After we take out this frigate, we should probably take out the turret. 
It can be hard to tell in missions what order you should be doing things in. Sometimes something like the turret will be a trigger for another wave. It's not like the uh, anomalies, we're, the combat anomalies we were doing, where generally each wave will not be spawned until you destroyed the entire previous wave. But if a new wave spawns now, these drone drones should not be too terrifying for us. We're also smashing D-Scan constantly. It would not be surprising for someone here in Nelsec to start combat probing a slasher. And this level one mission certainly is within our capability. The danger here is entirely from other players. There's an Ishker. There's no way that he'd be able to warp directly to us without descanning us first. So I mean, we'll just make sure that he's not on short scan, just in case we missed the combat probes, in case they had a really high skilled combat prober. But he's not appearing on short scan. So we're not going to worry about that Ishkur just yet. Need to destroy the drone silo. Is this the drone silo? It is. The turret dropped a cargo container. We'll make sure to check that out, although it's probably just ammo. Ishkur's gone off scan. And our mission is flagged as complete. Let's pick up that car container and head back to our agent. Pretty straightforward. All right, Mfant, are you impressed? Complete mission. Thanks, your services to Archangels are duly appreciated. Ah uh, yes, I should hope so. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, might be a good time to talk about our overarching goals. There are three driving goals behind this challenge. Three objectives that direct and define everything we've done thus far. Join the Angel Cartel, build a Cinnabal, get to Zarzak. Of course, because we started out in high sec with a civilian fit Reaper and 5,000 Isk in our pockets, there was a fourth objective that took precedence over all the others, because without it, none of them were even remotely approachable. Build and fit a non-Corvette ship, and leave high sec behind. Well, here's Angela the Slasher, we're angels now, and high sec's a distant memory. So are we halfway there? 12 episodes and done? Well... No. In this episode, we're finally going to start talking about what's involved in actually building a Cinnaball. Of course, the first thing we're going to need is a Cinnaball blueprint. But unlike the other blueprints we've dealt with so far, we can't just buy a Cinnaball BPO from NPCs for ISK. In fact, there's no such thing as a Cinnaball BPO. Instead, we'll need to get our hands on a Cinnaball blueprint copy, a BPC. There are a few different ways we can do this. They can be head for LP from various corporation loyalty shops, including that of the Malicum Angels, of which we're a member. They can also be looted as rare drops from Angel NPCs and certain sites. But our best option, our best option by far for getting a Cinnabal BPC is running Angel Sound, the Angel Cartel Epic Arc. This is a special series of cartel story missions that are designed to be run in a frigate or destroyer, and they give some pretty hefty rewards, culminating in precisely the Cinnabal blueprint copy we need. But in order to even start the Angel Sound Epic Arc, we need at least 3.0 standing with either the faction or corporation of one of the three starting agents. The starting agent we're going for is Alara Stin of the Dominations. Alara Stin. Alara Stin of the Dominations. She is hanging out in her Dramiel in Konora, um, but she won't talk to us yet because we will have zero standings with her and we have our standings with the Dominations and with the Angel Cartel 
Dominations, we have no standings. Angel Cartel, still 0 0.01. Negative. The Dominations are a corporation that we can specifically work to build our standings up with. So, we're going to move over to Utopia, the Dominations Assembly Plant, and see if someone there will talk to us. It's been a riot, Enfant. We have bigger fish to fry. There is a Kikimura sitting on the undock. We'll just give him a minute. Perhaps we should have made an instant undock bookmark here as well. That would have been wise. Okay, he's gone. Utopia is clear. Let's go. There's a daredevil now. This could spell trouble for us. Oh, he's not here. Or in local, Domination's Assembly Plant. There are wrecks of player ships here. Some violence has gone down. Broad D scan. Nobody in Oh, a claw in space. An interceptor. He's not on grid with us. The first thing we're going to do, as we know the, the grid is clear, there's nobody hanging outside the station, is we're going to undock, make sure it's not a kickout station, because that would be trouble for us, and then we're going to send an instant undock before. I don't know offhand which station models are kickout and which are not. But a quick little undock and then stop the ship, we'll tell you. If when the ship stops, you're still within zero meters of the station, then you're okay. Good, we could redock if we needed to. Now, maximum speed. Run a pretty straight on docks, so we shouldn't need to adjust our angle at all. I feel like 350 kilometers is pretty safe. There's several stations in system here, so we're going to say. Dominations, Planet 5, Moon 22. Instant undock. Now let's dock back up and see what the agent, agent situation looks like. Level 1 security. And a level 1 event security. Let's see what this guy's deal is. The Crazed Drone Scientist. 14 million isk reward. This will have significant impact on your faction standings. I was assigned the task of finding a missing scientist. His name is Lazarum Kaman. I think the crazy old coot got bored with life and took a trip out the airlock, but who knows? I'm getting fed up with these find a needle and haystack jobs, to be honest. Anyway, if you ever stumble across this guy, let me know, okay? Where the hell is Laz Lazarum Kaman? Okay. We're not going to tackle this right now. We're going to talk to the regular agent instead. Afrir Arbatoli. What do you got for me? Destroy the Sancho vessel vessels right here in system. Pirate aggression. All right, we can do this one. Well, Bill's running missions for the Dominations in the background, let's talk a little bit more about how we're going to actually build this Cinnaball. We have a clear path to a Cinnaball blueprint. All we need to do then is gather the materials it requires. The bill of materials for a Cinnaball is as follows. 648,000 Tritanium, 216,000 Pyrite, 43,200 Mexilon, 12,000 Isogen, 1,800 Noxium, 1,200 Zydrine, 600 Megasite, 4 SR Trigger Neuralink Conduits, 4 GO Trigger Neuralink Conduits, 60 Auto Integrity Preservation Seals, 30 Life Support Backup Units, and presumably a partridge in a goddamn pear tree. All the minerals from Tritanium through Megasite. 
we know we can get by just reprocessing modules we lead along the way. And if we fall short, we can always mine the rest from conventional belt asteroids. But what about those last four things? The Neuralink conduits, the preservation seals, the backup units? Well, it turns out, each of these is itself a manufactured product that we'll have to build from its own BPO. The BPOs, of course, we'll buy from NPCs, and they're... they're not cheap. So now let's look at the materials we'll need to build out these BPOs before we can even start building our BPC. That's right, we'll need super tensile plastics, nanites, test cultures, and viral agents, all of which come from planetary interaction. And we'll need these other six things on the left here, each of which is produced not from a BPO, but from a reaction formula. Thankfully, we can buy reaction formulas from NPCs, and they are, by comparison, relatively affordable. But each of these reactions has, obviously, its own set of ingredients, which look like this. I promise I'm not messing with you. In addition to gas and data site loot, that is seven more reaction formulas and BPOs, each of which has their own set of ingredients. But we've come this far, so here it is. Yes, that's Moongu and two more BPOs. We're going to have to ninja mine someone else's moon at some point. Oh, and those four fuel block BPOs also require more planetary interaction miscellany and ice products. So, in total, this is it. This is what building a Cinnaball looks like. While you let that soak in, maybe it's time for a quick bit update. While running the blockade, which is a mission with dozens of frigates, we were looting as we went, and among all of this miscellany, we collected a small C5L compact shield booster, and I'm pretty sure that pulling one of the shield extenders off of Angela, although it costs us about 600 effective hit points, putting on the small C5L con uh, shield booster gives us a 15 hit points per second boost rate. We are going to have to watch our capacitor. We won't be able to perma-run it, especially with the micro warp drive, but this is a strict improvement to our survivability. Now, back to building that Cinnaball. Through the magic of spreadsheets, because, be real, we always knew it was going to come to spreadsheets eventually, I've laid out an accounting of all the materials we're going to need for the full process, grouped by how we'll obtain them. So let's use this information to break down primary goal number two into more detail. We will need to Acquire a Cinnaball BPC by reaching the required standing with the Dominations and completing the Angel Sound Epic Arc. Obtain standard minerals through loot reprocessing or belt mining. Harvest some gas. Mine some ice. Ninja mine a moon. Set up planetary interaction. Scan and hack an unknown number of data sites in search of random specific loot drops. Earn 570 million isk from bounties to get the BPOs and reaction formulas then consolidate all of these materials into one location and finally start performing the requisite reaction and manufacturing steps. Oh, time for another quick bit update. The capacitor draw on the small shield booster is a huge pain in my ass, so I'm gonna try flying afterburner for a while. The good news, to the degree that there is any, is that most of these steps can be performed in any order. But many of them will have sub goals and side quests tied up in completing them, like for example, before we can find our gas sites, we're going to need to build a probe launcher and some scanner probes, which will require new BPOs. And before we can huff the gas, even after we've found it, we'll need to build gas cloud harvesters and probably a venture too, which is more BPOs. Oh, and the venture BPO is only sold in outer ring, which can only be reached by traversing through Sov Null or wormhole space. Frankly, we're going to end up needing a number of different ship hulls to complete all these tasks, and we're going to start needing them pretty soon. In fact, the only item on this list that we can reasonably complete in Angela the Slasher is this one. And so that's what we're going to do first. Believe it or not, we've successfully run 15 level 1 Nelsec missions for the Angela Cartel without getting caught in a gate camp even once or combat probed a single time. We've worked our standing with the Dominations Corporation up from all the way from 0 to 1.4, which is almost halfway to the 3.0 that we need. The reason we've stopped at 15 missions, though, is because there's a trick in EVE where every 16th mission that you run for a given faction at a given level, a special agent of that faction will reach out to you with an offer of a storyline mission that, when completed successfully, will give you a boost across the whole faction to your standing. 
but will give you an especially large boost to the standing you have with the corporation of the storyline agent, which is not necessarily the same corporation as the one you've been running missions for up till that point. So this is a bit convoluted, but we want to make sure that when we, when we run our 16th mission, we get the offer from a storyline agent that's affiliated with the Dominations, not the Archangels or some other Angel subcorp. Um, so I haven't talked a lot about external tools, but there is a great tool called Dotlan um, on the web which contains wonderful 2D maps of the whole game, but also a search feature. And so I've used the Dotland search feature to find the nearest system where I can guarantee that the special storyline offer I get is from a Dominations agent. And it turns out that the nearest Dominations storyline agent is named Eva Morel Nemestra. Let me just try and type that in up here. Eva Morel, maybe it's like that. Eva Morel Nemestra in J7AUR. It's 11 jumps. All right, she won't talk to me directly, sorry. But I'm gonna set the next destination to her system because then we'll be there. And when our time comes for an angel storyline, it'll be her that gives it to us. Um, now, a second trick from an external tool, now that we're living in Nullsec, is that I already checked before I started filming this segment what our route would be to J7A. And our route to J7A takes us through a bottleneck pipe between Hemen and RMOC, ta R RMOC Tech, um, which is almost permanently bubble camped by a Gnosis. Um, I know this because I used Eve Gate Check, which is another external tool, um, which compiles the publicly posted kill mails from the game, and you can see this Gnosis with this bubble just killing people at that gate constantly. So we've used Eve Gate Check to check and see if there's another route where there have not been continuous gate camp kills, and it suggested that we can go two jump. It'll take us two jumps longer to get there. But we can go around through catch and get around to J7A this way. So that's what we're going to try and do. Um, oh, one other thing before we go, I want to double check these 78 Concord soldier emblems that, uh, that we collected because I'm pretty sure that somewhere yeah, even locally in system, right? Not in this station though? So at the Serpentis Corporation chemical refinery in system, there is an NPC buy order for these emblems, which means that we won't be selling them to a player. These can just be turned into the, Serpent to the Serpentis for cash. So before we leave here, we will do that. And then we'll be immediately on our way to J7A. If we can go 14 jumps through curse and catch without being cursed or caught, I guess. Sorry. That was terrible. Let's check our D-scan in Utopia. It looks clear. Let's find the Serpentis Corporation right there. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned it. I think that it was in a part that I fast-forwarded through in the last episode. But I've also adjusted my D-scan now so that it only shows player ships, combat probes, and uh, warp bubbles because those are the things that I want to be seeing when I'm descanning, and when your descan gets full of, like, wrecks and abandoned drones and such, you can really lose the critical information very easily. So now our descan is much cleaner, and we've also added a second overview tab, which contains just moons that are as far away from in the system from us as possible, which is our ideal emergency warp out point. Um, this is the sort of thing that you need to make sure that you, your UI is set up to cause you as few problems as possible when you're trying to navigate around in Nelsack without getting killed. So now we're going to sell these. We're going to make sure that they're being sold immediately to the NPC by order. Yes. There are relatively few things that our rules will allow us to sell. Um, the Concord um, emblems are one. 
Um, some tags, I think, are another, and then like overseer effects. But we'll take the 17, 717,000 disc for these 78 Con Concord emblems. Done and done. All right, J7A tack you are. Here we come. We've already made a safe spot over by the Litom Gate. So we're going to warp to it so that we can descan the gate and make sure there aren't any bubbles there. This would be a very will abort and come straight back and try this again in a couple hours if there are bubbles there. Um, and then as we go through the systems we haven't been in before, we're going to be bouncing around from Celestial to Celestial to make sure that we can descan de every gate before we warp to it. Um, and ideally, we'll be warping into the gate from a safe spot or a Celestial that's not directly in line with it, um, just to avoid any bubbles, In case, especially in case we end up having to warp to a gate that there is no Celestial we can get to in advance that will give us descan range on it. Hopefully that, that doesn't happen. Uh, I've also just noticed that I have 60 armor damage that I never never repaired after one of my recent missions. But I have a feeling that if we get locked and are taking damage, then the jig is already up. So I don't think that those 60 armor hit points we're missing are going to be particularly relevant during this voyage. Okay, there is one person in local. The Jamunda Gate is 22 AU away. We have a safe spot already in Litom because plenty of the missions from Utopia were bringing us here. So I feel pretty secure about this. I think our safe spot, yes, is within D scan, scan of Jamunda. Someone else has jumped into system. We're going to give them a second to decloak in case they jumped in from Jamunda before we go ahead and warp to that gate because. The last thing you want to do is, it's a shuttle. The last thing you want to do is see the gate is clear on D-Scan and start warping to it, not having realized that a an interdictor, 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 I never know, an interdictor jumped through and is sitting there holding gate cloak. And as soon as you start warping in, he's going to follow you through and drop a bubble. So Jamunda's clear. Two out of our 14 jumps down. If this goes really smoothly the whole way, then maybe at some point relatively soon, you'll see uh, this video speed up a bit. But for now, I'm going to keep chatting because I'm assuming that we're going to run into some danger sooner than later, and I want to be prepared to talk us through it for my own sake as much as as much as yours. I think this is us entering into catch now, and it's been a while since I've been in catch, so I don't know what the situation's like over there. Dotlan, again, the mapping tool I was talking about, it does let you peek around and see how busy systems are. And it seems like these systems have not been that busy the last day or so, too, but there's a big difference between seeing low activity on Dotland, knowing there's only been a few pirates in space or a few people killing NPCs, versus actually being in the system and seeing what the activity really looks like once you have D-Scan available to you. Now, we are also, it's worth noting, in Sovnal now. This is territory that belongs to... Who even holds this? Tactical Farmers, who I've never heard of. Okay, so we're still not within D-Scan range of the gate. Let's take a look at our map and see if there is anywhere that is within D-Scan range of that gate. We're going to the FR2 gate. Okay, so all of these things over here. So we're going to warp to... I don't want to warp to... Uh, I guess we can I guess we can warp to one of these... Uh, and always in 100 as long as we warp again quite quickly. I just don't want, don't want to pop by NPCs while making safe spots. 
So this is going to be a safe spot near F4 gate. Still nobody on scan. It's really only only Lando Pokemon that we could be worrying about. <laughs> and Lando Pokemon is nowhere to be seen. So as soon as we land, we're going to warp to the F4 gate. Oh man, those towers started shooting us straight away. I guess we need to be more danger more careful about warping to those anomalies. I thought that anything that could hit us from 100 kilometers away would at least take a few seconds to lock us in the first place, but these NPCs have hacks. It's always been the way in EVE Online. NPC hacks. Sometimes frigates are targeting you from 8,000 kilometers away. Okay, 10 in local, but most of them have names that have told us they are mining, and that they are all alt from someone multiboxing. There is a Drake and a Bantam. This frankly does not feel especially threatening. And they're on D-scan, which means that if I warp to a mining site that is off D-scan, I won't be warping to their mining site. And we'll drop another safe spot. We're in Fraternity Space now, who I have heard of. But just because we're in Fraternity Space doesn't necessarily mean that, oh my goodness, look at all of that. Look at all of those NPCs. We're going to warp back to our safe spot. Just because we're in frat space doesn't mean that a frat fleet is going to drop on us drop on us as soon as someone says that there's a uh, neutral and local. As much as you might as much as that might be what you've heard from uh, people on Reddit who have never been to Nelsec talking about what going through sovereign Sov Null is like. It is not nearly so dangerous. Which now that I'm now that I've said it is a virtual guarantee that we're gonna get a whole fleet Sino dropped on our slasher. So we've got no way to get within D-scan range of this ZX gate. We're going to drop a safe spot on the way. So we're doing a blind warp. Um, we have initiated the warp from a safe spot that is not in line with anywhere else in the system. So hopefully if there is a bubble up, we won't be landing in it. And I think that we... Holy moly. Holy moly. Something happened here. Well, there were a whole lot of abandoned drones there. Something has just gone down, but <laughs> it is going down no longer. So we seem to be okay. Uh, let's just quick take a quick look at where the next gate is. And we will warp to a planet at 100. I feel like warping to these NPC anomalies, even though it is pretty safe. Those sentry guns aren't going to instant pop us from that, di from that distance. I just don't like taking the damage, because we're pretty thin. I don't like warping to planets, because people expect you to warp to planets. Uh, they're easy to warp to, and they're generally safe to warp to, which in Nelsec results in them not being safe to warp to and also results in them not necessarily being safe places to approach a gate from. Um, you don't warp gate to gate because people set up their drag bubbles and their stop bubbles to catch gate to gate warpers. Um, but a really intense bubble tech camp will also be setting up their bubbles in line with things like planets. So if you want to find a safe angle to try and warp into to avoid the bubbles, a planet's usually not it. You usually want to be using a safe spot in the middle of nowhere, or an anomaly which can spawn sort of all over the place. So, so I often try and choose anomalies as my warp to when I'm getting an angle or creating a safe spot, uh, because then your safe spots also are not in between two celestials, which makes it much, much less likely that some random person is going to ever just land on, or land on grid with you is unlikely anyways. Okay, there's a Stabber and an Ishtar here. Um, we need to get off grid. Let's make the safe spot. Ember. 
Directing. Dracaris. Alright. Aber and Ishtar are both still on grid. I'm still on D scan. But they're not on the gate, so we're gonna just go for it. Sorry, I was saying when you make your D spot on your way to an anomaly rather than in between two celestials, it means so that someone else warping between those two celestials won't then see you as they pass by and know exactly where, where your safe spot is. Um, anomalies change position every day, so that's the theory behind using them as for safe, for safe spot creation. There's a lot of other ways to make good safe spots as well. Okay, 6 tack k seems pretty clear. When there is nobody in local, it is possible that there would, could still be traps that would cause you difficulty. Um, famously, rooks and kings used to do these pipe bomb tricks, which involved like people logging on at just the right time. I don't even really know how it worked. The truth is, nobody's doing it for a soul slasher. So when, when local's empty, we're going to warp gate to gate without a care in the world. People are very creative in how they kill each other in this game. But again, contrary to popular belief, those extremely creative, extremely murderous people can only be in one place at any one given time. And this is a big galaxy. Oh, our next outgate is Oh Shit Tack A. I would be surprised if there isn't somebody living in the system just for the uh, system name memes. I'm expecting we're gonna jump through and immediately see some comedy, uh, comedy citadels. Oh, and Oshitake is back in curse. So once we make this jump, we will have made our first dip through Sovnal space. Without being killed, and there's, there's the oh shit, Astra Bordazar <laughs> absolutely called it. One person in local. Where is that station? There it is. I am going to warp to this asteroid belt to make a proper safe spot on the system, because we're going to be here at least for enough time to run hopefully two missions. And I want to make sure that our safe spot in this system is a decent one. I feel less concerned about the quality of our safe spots in those random systems in frat space that we were passing through, that we are likely to only pass through exactly one other time on our way back. Presuming we survive that long. But this safe spot here is one we're likely to rely on. Especially, there's one other person in the system. They are in a Vexer. Now, a Vexer is a vexing ship to encounter in Nelsec because it is equally likely to be a ratting ship that's killing NPCs or running missions, or a PvP gank ship with full blasters. He appears to be at the desolate asteroid belt, so we're going to leave him there, and we're going to go dock up at the Domination's testing facilities, where our agent lives. And I believe, I believe I was clever enough to check in advance on Dotland again to ensure that this station also had a regular level one uh, agent that we could talk to. We're going to stop in and we're going to undock immediately so that we can make sure this isn't, isn't a kick out and we can see if we need to set an undock bookmark. Perfect. There's Eva Morel Nemestra. Be talking to you soon. And Shabani, who we'll talk, talk to sooner. Um, but first, we're going to see if we have to set an undock bookmark or what the undock situation looks like. Insta-undock, safely made. 
while I was burning out that bookmark uh, for the Insta Undock, it occurred to me that I should also mention that we have trained social skill up to three, which is helping us uh, build our faction, our corporation rep more quickly as we talk to these agents. I also took the plunge and purchased criminal connections off of the character sheet for the ISK premium um, so that we can start it training to level two so far and I've got it in the queue up to level four though we may not need it. Criminal Connections gives us a flat boost to our standing with every pirate faction and all of their associated corporations. So you can see right here, it's giving us a, pl a plus 0 0.75 standings boost with Dominations. And if we train the two more levels, then that boost will be double that. So let's talk to Shabani, see what he has to do, has, has for us to do. Shabani says, Rogue drone harassment. Destroy the rogue drones and then report back to your agent. Don't forget to use the acceleration gates leading, leading further into the dead space pocket. We will do it. Hopefully we have enough ammo. We brought from Utopia all of the ammo that we had that fits in Angela's guns um, without flying back out to Losec. But all that we had is not a whole heck of a lot. Um, is that in system? We need to travel to JWJ, which is where we just were. If we warp back to our safe spot, I don't think we'll be within range of it. However, the Vexer we know is here, which means we know that he's not over at the JWJ gate. So we'll warp to our safe spot, and then we'll warp to JWJ. And as we're in warp over there, with the system being relatively safe at the moment, we will drop another bookmark that is within D scan range of the gate for future use. So we've got a full load of fusion in our, in our guns now, but 600 fusion, 400 EMP, and 300 miscellaneous in our hold. That should be enough to run two missions, which is all that we need to do. Hopefully, all that we need to do. All that we're planning to do right now. I'm truly hopeful that this storyline mission will be enough to push us up to 3.0 standing. At least, it will be if we keep training Criminal Connections. Um, if it's not, then we'll have to stick around and probably run another up to 16 missions. Rogue Drone Harassment. Oh, I think this might be the same as the uh, first mission I ran for the nominations. Is it? They all kind of string together. Now, I have been salvaging along the way throughout all of the previous missions that I've run, but I've got a decent selection of drone salvage now, and while they do drop some generic salvage, especially these smaller ones, they drop very, very little. And the unique salvage that they drop is salvage, unsurprisingly, related to drones. So we're not going to stress out too much about trying to collect every little bit of salvage here when we have other things to be doing. Take a look at these drones. Are you as creepy as you look like in your snapshot? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I do not feel bad <laughs> about killing. <laughs> Whatever the hell this is. Okay, through the gate. More Raider Albies. Oh, is our mission flag is complete? Oh yeah, taking out these Raider Alves is optional, so in fact, let's save the ammo. J7A, here we come. And then hopefully, hopefully we'll get that long-awaited introduction to Ibi Morel. This is almost certainly the only part of the run where we'll be running missions at all. The Loyalty points are interesting. We might, we will spend our loyalty points on something from the shop. 
Um, but ru even though running agent mi angel missions is something that's allowed to us, and we could, I suppose, try and ramp our way up to higher and higher level missions, it's just not the fastest way to earn ISK, and it doesn't move us towards any of our other goals. So we're going to be running these missions to specifically get our standing up enough to start the Epic Arc, which gives us the blueprint, blueprint copy that we need. We'll run the Epic Arc to get that BPC, and then from there on out, I think we probably won't touch, touch the mission system again. So I don't mind that we're getting our fill of it right now. But I am glad that we are not going to be fucking in for running hundreds and hundreds of these. All right, Shavani. Your mission is complete. Give me my 144,000 ISK. And my 142 LP. Now we wait. The mission offer from Even Morel Nemestra has come in, and it's materials for war preparation. We are escalating our production so we can increase our military strength in light of recent political upheavals in the world. Increased production requires more minerals. I want you to get 1,000 Valdspar to one of our main production facilities, namely this facility right here. Um, 1,000 Feldspar, it's only 100 cubic meters. It'll fit in our slasher. The problem is we don't have mining lasers. And the bigger problem is that, as far as I know, Feldspar does not spawn in Nelsec. So I believe we're gonna have to fly all the way back out to Derelict in order to mine this feldspar with some of those meta mining la lasers that we collected earlier. So it's going to be a bit of an adventure, um, particularly smuggling that 100 feldspar back in here to Eva Morel. But this mission is our best route to the 3.0 standings with the dominations. So Eva Morel, I accept. Now what? <laughs>